Jim, you listening to Dish Race, you back with our uh, special guest. And I mean special as in we honor him, not special as in he majored in uh, special ed. <laughs> what? What's wrong well, with that? Well, let me have another drink. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Uh, NBA legend, uh, former coach of the year in 07, uh, got fired in 08. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. Oh, nine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me my extra year. Uh, and now a national syndicated uh, commentator, sports commentator. Thank you for coming, man, before I forget. Come on, man. You know you my dude, man. We have fun, but you know I love you, dude. We you had know that. fun back in the day, boy. We did, but you know you my guy. I mean, a couple of days, boy, we was ready to knuckle up. We had to knuckle up with some. We, 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 let me tell you something, man. And Sam, you had a lot of, you had a lot of, you had some rough days. I mean, you had some, you had some damn fight. I remember in particular, uh -oh. there's different shit coming back to <laughs> uh -oh. my mind. Uh -oh. I don't know if I can tell you. Uh oh, what else have you not told? <laughs> you not told? You not, dude, all my little secrets that I thought I kept close to the vest, you not exposed them, so you done laid me out. Why don't you just well, go on and gut me and lay me on to the side and finish me off? Hang them upside I'm down. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I mean, really? Hold on, Ain't that the definition of a friend? They'll do what? Fuck you every time? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I, I'm, I'm a sidekick. That nigga talking so bad about me every goddamn week, man. Because I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah, I, don't, I love you too. Sam, but feel at any time to stop me if you think this story uh -oh. is is not a good one to tell. But I All was right. talking about your knuckling up. I remember you were in Toronto. You were coaching Vince Carter. <laughs> oh, that's one of my favorite players. Well, he finna get his ass whipped one night. <laughs> stop. If you get his ass whipped one night. I'm going to let you tell the story, and then I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I got the story. Right. Vince Carter, you know, he's a young boy. He was jumping out the gym and shit. So he going to talk shit and practice what they were saying. Ooh. Who was the head coach? Right. And he said something about whipping some ass. <laughs> uh -oh. And Sam limped out there on that bad hip and that bad knee. <laughs> He said, man, I'll beat the brakes off your motherfucking ass. If you, if you ever step to me, my young man, I will kill you. Not kill, not kill. What not kind kill. of shit is that for a head coach to no, say? No, what's, say the respect, what's the respect? It is number one. No, that. no, that, no, no. It no, never said kill. Now, hold look, on, let's go back. They say kill, they say You cannot believe. Look, when I played for the Timberwolves, we had a 12 o'clock game. And people said I was in some small town like three and a half hours out partying mm. with people at a local college. Was it and true? And I had a 12 o'clock game. Was it I, true? No, it wasn't oh, true. Okay. And this was not true at all. It's just something, what happened was we were in a training room. What happened was? And Vince Carter and I, I was walking through the training room. And he and a couple of players grabbed me mm. as the coach and pit me on the training table. Okay. That's it. Oh, they, so they were just playing. Yes. It wasn't okay. nothing gay going on. That's just oh, God. Weird, man. Well, no baby <laughs> oil in there. Y'all was up in Toronto. Oh, hold on, no, what? Baby oil. Oh, oh, hold up now. Oh, hey. The GHC. So, so, so that's your world. You in Hollywood. <laughs> now, hold up now. He was, he was at some of the parties. <laughs> But we were in Hollywood. I never got to, went to them parties. So, so here's a question. Hard. As a coach, did you find it harder to coach black males opposed to white males? Oh, my God. That is a great question. Really? I never you thought You want me to be honest? Hold on. Honest. Really now, hold on. Hold on. Sister J actually made a great question. That's a great First question. First of all, don't get it twisted, King. <laughs> Can we hear uh -oh, him answer that before we go? Let him answer the question. Let him answer the question. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. This is the first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's say get this out. I'm going to say this. Inherently, white coaches have more power when they come into the profession than black coaches because... Players in general view the white coach as an extension of the owner. Mm. Because a lot of times, white coaches go to the owner's house for dinner. Mm -hmm. they, they do not say they're friends, but they do social things. He's yeah. invited to things. Mm -hmm. Whereas black coaches are not. 
You ain't so, invited to nothing. Hold up. No, puppet no, party. No, 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 sad, sad, you at a puppet party. No. Hold, hold, hold up. Let, let the man, this ain't Fox and Kamala Harris, yeah. man. Let the man answer. The, he's a special guest, man. Yeah. Yeah. Let, really let him answer the damn questions, man. Nobody's ever asked that question. Now, I've thought about that. So, inherently, they get that because we don't have access to the owner mm-hmm. like the white coaches. Mm-hmm. So for us, we have to establish ourselves early. Mm-hmm. So when I came in as a young coach, I was hard. I was mm-hmm. tough. Because there's an the old saying, you can always go from hard to ease up, mm-hmm. but you can't go from soft to hard. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so we have to be that because of that. The players know. Like when I played, I knew my coaches, they had dinner with the owner. Because mm-hmm. the owner would come down to practice and talk to him, them, in a way he didn't talk to the black assistant mm. or the coaches. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Even when I played for a black, a, it was a black coach, the owner would come down, but he didn't, he didn't, ha- he didn't talk to the black coach the mm. way he talked. Now, this is the difference. When I was a head coach in Toronto, it was different. Mr. Tannenbaum treated me different. I had dinner with him. Mm -hmm. I went to hockey games with him. Mm -hmm. So the players understood Mm -hmm. that I had a certain amount of power. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have got the same thing Mm -hmm. if I was coaching in the U.S. So it was actually a blessing in disguise for me to be the head coach of the Toronto Raptors Mm -hmm. because they viewed me different. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And it's not that it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Think about it in your life. When we were growing up, when you went into a place and a white person helped you, mm-hmm. you were taught mm-hmm. to conduct yourself a certain mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. All of us have. Mm-hmm. People can lie and say they wasn't. Mm-hmm. You're lying. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But when it was a black person at the same job, mm-hmm. the same title, mm-hmm. you looked at them a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in coaching, it's the same way. So as a black coach... We is it, we have to come in and establish ourselves early because we don't because the players know that we're not having dinner, we're not being invited, we're not. And, and I'm not saying because hold up, I'm not saying because the owners don't like us, they hired us. It's because there is a social difference mm-hmm. than what we like sometimes and what they like. Mm-hmm. And Sam, I've been at your does house. Does that make sense? I've Makes been at your sense. house when you were coaching. And everybody was over there. Oh, I yeah. felt like a midget, man. <laughs> I would have my whole I team like over to my house. man, because everybody was ducking and going under the door. <laughs> except me. And, man, them of would be big, boy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just don't know. Sam was, like, short compared mm. to them. I'll tell you, you remember you had Six, that party? Well, when KG, KG, was, KG, when he KG was, was, was MVP yeah. at an All-Star, All-Star game, when the All-Star game was Atlanta. And he wanted me to take he him on my He came over bus. to my I had all the players, and KG players. was at my house yeah. down in Peachtree City where, D, where DC right. and I lived. And they were in the thing that I think, and I invited people from the neighborhood over. DC came over and stuff. And the thing that people don't understand, they're just people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just they're good some, guys, but they right. some big ass people. They just some big ass hungry <laughs> people. So, 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 how much uh, baby oil do y'all have? Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> see, see. Hold on, Sam. Can I ask this question? With going back to coaching, you said the players revered, seem to revere white coaches more than black. Not revered, but <laughs> understood that there was a that there was a relationship more so tied to the front office than with us. Okay, so. What line did PJ Calismo cross to make Latrell Sprewell go that? <laughs> Do you know what he said to him? No, I don't. No. Sprewell never would tell. No, I don't that's know. I believe, saying, he, ca- I believe right. he called him a nigga. No. Because if you said, look, I, I don't believe he called a nigga over some games. I'm going to say this. Okay. I know PJ. Right. PJ is a good dude, man. He oh. really is. Yeah. People, the and brothers, right. people. PJ, we don't, PJ is a good dude. Right. He's a fiery dude. Right. He's an emotional dude. But PJ has a lot of rules. Right. And like he's a stickler control. for his rules. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I promise you, PJ is a good dude, okay. man. Right. He is. But sometimes it's player snap, man. Yeah. And you okay. got to understand that. And PJ got a stickler for their rules. Like I know coaches who, y'all going to trip. When, we're doing, when we had a water break in practice, they didn't want you to get water unless you got water as a team. 
<laughs> and we're like, school. motherfucker, when I'm That's thirsty, I'm going to get some drink. I ain't going to ask you when the fuck I can get something to drink. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, but you had coaches who liked that type of stuff. They felt like that was part of their team building. Mm -hmm. So everybody's different, man. So, but PJ is a good dude, man. Okay. He really is. So wondering. here's a question. Um, here we did go. you find it, that's right, here we go. <laughs> did you find it difficult to coach players that did not have fathers in the home versus players that had fathers in the home? I mean, where the hell you come from with these <laughs> damn questions? These are some freaking outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. And you know what? As a coach, you think about these things. Like when, I draft get, when we draft players, you kind of know their background. I wouldn't say difficult. But I made myself more available okay. from a standpoint of being there as a sounding board, not just always being their coach, but not 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 that being their friend. Because as a coach, you can never be their friend. Like I tell my my girls, my kids, I'm the, I'm your father. I'm never right. going to be your friend. Right. So I was their coach, but I wanted to be a listening ear, someone that they could come talk to, someone that they felt safe around, mm -hmm. that they could tell me things. And it's saying, like, I had a player, I, I, an Italian, one of my foreign players, come to me and tell me something really, really, really close to him. Mm -hmm. And he asked me not to tell the general manager mm -hmm. when he told me. That's my boss. And that's something that would affect his, his play on the court. Mm -hmm. I set him down. I said, look, I appreciate you sharing that with me. But this affects not only you, it affects your play, which is going to affect our team. Mm -hmm. He's got to know. Mm -hmm. So I broke it down into a way to where, look, we got to tell him. Right. Right? But players would come to you with, mm -hmm. with intimate, with, 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 mm -hmm. with things like that, mm -hmm. and you had to make yourself available. And I appreciate that, appreciated that because that means I built trust. Right. And I never broke that trust. Mm -hmm. Like, I never would use the stuff a player would come to me that's off limits. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to be a total pro. I never would use that. And then there's coaches who would use stuff they find out about you. Mm -hmm. They thought it was motivating you. Mm -hmm. And I was a hard coach. I push hard. But there's a fine line between pushing and abuse. Right, right. And I used to tell players, I'm going to love you harder than I coach you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. that was my approach to coaching. So, so last talking. question. How do you feel about the big three with Ice Cube? I like it. Okay. Because it's giving older players a venue. Mm -hmm. It's giving former players. Look, the coaching, I love the fact that he don't pick people like me. I'm a coach. You got GP. You got mm -hmm. Oak. You got their, 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 their personalities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They know the game. But they're going to crack jokes. They're going to say crazy stuff. Right. They're part yeah. of the game. I'm enjoying it, man. I love it. Because they're too. part. Ice Cube picked the right people. They're part of the game. I'm and enjoying basketball it. And big, the big three is entertainment. I That's what it to, is, DC. I talked to GP the other day in, in California, Gary Payton. Gary Payton told me he's coaching at a college now. Too. He is. At Oakland University. He told me he enjoys coaching the big three more than he enjoys coaching. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Because you're coaching pros too now. Wow. You're coaching guys who know how to play. Mm -hmm. But I love what Ice Cube has done mm -hmm. because yeah. not only is giving players jobs, mm -hmm. they're making money, it's entertaining the fans, mm -hmm. and this is the difference. The interaction with the fans. The big three, they hanging out with the players. Mm -hmm. They can go to the club with the players. Mm -hmm. They get to be around the players. Mm -hmm. They get to get up close. Look, you ain't getting near Kevin Durant, LeBron, and mm -hmm. Steph. You can forget about it. It ain't happening. Mm -hmm. But when they retire and play in the big three, yeah. you got access to those guys. Right. So I love so, them. So now they can fuck the White House. <laughs> see, you Where know what? You see what I'm now saying? Now you can fuck the white see, house. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was his way. No, hell no. <laughs> All right. Now, now the hey, uh, you kind of old. I don't know if you can handle that heat. He kind of old. Right. They don't answer a lot Let of me. questions, and then you don't answer all Let the like. Rap. Go ahead. The one question was, do you prefer, or can you tell the difference between coaching the men with that had a father in their life or without? So 
you didn't quite answer that, and then well, I want to double down well, and even say, even if you had, a, to even the if you had a father like weight ball, no, you wouldn't I make had, the what team. What I'm saying is, <laughs> you, you the difference was, I made myself more available to the guys that I knew didn't have a father. The guys that got a dad, I grew up with a father in my house. I got a dad. The guys that did, I made myself more available in case they wanted that type of relationship. You know, I didn't force it on them, but I made myself. And one thing I did as a coach, I took all my players out individually for lunch or dinner. Okay. And I would pick a road trip, mm. Cleveland, where they didn't want to go out. I, don't pick L.A. Mm -hmm. Don't pick New York. Mm -hmm. Don't pick Toronto. You know, don't pick nice cities where guys can go hang out. I would pick Cleveland, Utah, and I would take a guy out individually. Which reminds and the, me and the of thing another was, story. We never talked about basketball. It was about whatever they wanted to talk about, just shooting the shit. But we never talked about the game. We never talked about them getting better. It was just we just having dinner, and yeah. we talk about wherever we talk about. Do you remember? We were in L.A. and we went to a restaurant one night, and the big. 72 white boy was there that played with y'all. And so I didn't notice nothing until the guy stood up. I said, damn, Sam, who is he? <laughs> and we've been sitting there all night. Sam said, oh, that's my teammate. But y'all act like y'all didn't know each other, man. No, D, but I was out with my friend with you. So they gonna give me my space. Oh man, you gonna make me cry, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't you, you hear gotta that remember bullshit. now, during the season, <laughs> I was paying we're Thank with you our for teammates. Being my I'm friend. with my team more than I'm with my family. Yeah. I'm with them at seven and a half, eight months strong, man. I mean, I'm I'm in the office at seven o'clock as a coach. Yeah. So I'm leaving, I'm leaving home at six. I'm getting up at five. I'm not getting home to six thirty, seven o'clock. Mm. And on game nights, I'm not getting home to midnight. And I'm back in the office still at 6.37 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's the routine, man. So I'm with the players more than I am with my family. Right? If my wife wanted to see me when we had a homestand, she'd come to the bring your ass to the game. Because mm -hmm. I was at the arena. That's, so how did that play that's why she's no longer your question, wife. But how did that play as fatherhood <laughs> with your four daughters and then wife? How did you balance that? <sighs> It was hard, but as a player, it was easier as a player than as a coach. Mm -hmm. Because as a player, you come to, it's, let's say practice at 11 o'clock. You show up 9.30. You get your workout, you, you lift in, have a little bite to eat. You go on the floor, you put practice, you get your shots up after practice. Mm -hmm. I pick my kids up every day at 3 o'clock for school. Awesome. My work day done. Mm -hmm. When I went home, I ain't had to watch no film. Mm -hmm. I ain't had to worry about who pissed off at me because they didn't play. Mm -hmm. I ain't had to ask no phone call because no damn agents calling me. Mm -hmm. I ain't have none of that. As a player, it's easy. Well, Plus, a lot groupies too, right? <laughs> Come on now, it's more groupies too, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank As you. a coach, <laughs> my day started at five o'clock. I got up. So I got ready to go to work. I was in the office by 6.30. Mm -hmm. I was there to 5.36. Shit. I got home. I had film to watch. Because after practice, I had meetings. I had organizational meetings. Ain't no joke. I had the press. It ain't no I joke. had to do. I had different things I had to do. But I still had to watch film and get ready for my job. Because I got to know, even though the scout is my assistant's, I got to know what the fuck they watching. Right. That's so right. that when they say they right do on. this, this, and this, I got to know because I saw have the final say so. Mm -hmm. And I'm never going to sign off on something I didn't watch. That's okay. right. I just wanna we could so go on. So my job we'll go on about was, this. it was long. Yeah, we, we, we could go on. Who and fuck we could go on. Out. No, no. <laughs> See, you know <laughs> what? Well, uh, I can tell you We get We got to shout out Ken Richardson. Ken Richardson. That's we we could go on and on forever, man. I mean, this is incredibly uh, interesting. Let me stop, though. Because it's, it's too long. We ain't got to shout no, How much he we gave us? He about, gave more than five dollars. We trying to find out who fucked the White House first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, man, ho hold it, man. Like right. Right. And he can whip your ass. ass. You do your, realize that, right? beat your heterosexual <laughs> ass. <laughs> I would like to say. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm betting on your hand down. Everything I got. Everything. On Dwight. And borrowing some, too. I'm betting on you, Gimbo. <laughs> Oh, shit. You got to get to it. Hold on. Come on, boo. 
Hold up, hold up. I bet on Sister JJ against you, boo. Uh, but let, let me pause for a moment, man. Uh, well, I'm going to come back to thanking Sam. But Wanda Smith died last week. Yes. 58 years old. Yeah. Well, you never know what a person going through. They said she had been sick for a while. I talked to her sister yesterday. But she didn't want anybody to know. I mean, with certain illnesses, you know, you can get away with that. You know what I mean? Because she wasn't showing no signs. Ain't like, like, like a person with Parkinson's, you know, you know, because they're shaking and shit. So you don't go give a person with, I got a buddy got Parkinson's, and he got mad at me last year because I gave him an electric toothbrush. See, you know what? DC. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What? Hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on, hold <laughs> that, that you found out. Why are you doing that, DC? DC. I'm, trying I'm to not tell laughing. You got hold, on, hold on. But I gave him an electric toothbrush. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm and not he, laughing. He started shaving his eyebrows. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. But, uh, but DC. Rest in peace. Have you ever heard the term hair busting with eyes open? Right. That's well, the most of them. Together. Rest in peace. But have we figured out one? Yes. Rest in peace. Is knowledge out there that what she died from? Is there. A clear cut. I know, um, but I'm not going to tell you. Reason for what she passed from. I know, but I'm not going to tell it. But yeah. you keep saying it's damn Parkinson, so don't say that. Don't say what? Don't say she did from Parkinson. He didn't I say didn't she say died that. from Parkinson. He told a story about a guy that had Parkinson. Thank, thank right. you. Right. Really? He bought him a well, well, toothbrush. Well, the, thank the you. Actual, no, I said she. The actual two person. Get your hand out of my face, Get your hand out of my face. The two person. On the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the on the on the TV screen on the on the thing. I told you about that finger man. <laughs> Person on the screen. Ah uh, damn! Hold Sam, on, Sam, Sam beat your ass. Your, oh, the on the internet, they say we want to know what the actual cause is. So no, you're not going to tell. No, it's not important for, for the viewers important. out there. It's not the fact important. Is that she's, she's dead. She's dead. She's she's just don't do that. No, I didn't say she had. I did not. He did not say. He okay. told a story about a guy with Parkinson that he brought well, well, people, I was stupid saying, people. I was talking about her not saying stupid people. she was sick. Yeah. And I'm no. saying it wasn't obvious no. what she was sick from. Absolutely. Unlike a person with Parkinson, Parkinson's, Parkinson's where you can tell the symptoms, symptoms. And symptoms. then you can adjust your mind, which I didn't do when I gave my friend electric toothbrush and he had Parkinson's. That's what I said. She didn't have parts. I saw her. She was, you know, perfect. Picture health. health. Yeah. yeah. So you know. And she was funny. She came up with us both. That's like saying I died. And they be like, last time I seen Weight Ball, he was a perfect he good health. Like, no. Oh, yeah. That was a big ass nigga. Now, whoa, 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 I ain't whoa, saying whoa, she was amazing. Hold on a second. Let me wrap. Let me wrap this show up, which is. Let me let me wrap this show up, which has gotten way out of hand. Uh. Oh, he must have eight. <laughs> uh, I said that to say, we, did, we didn't get to a lot of stuff I had on my list, but uh, uh, Carla, sit your ass down for a minute. Sit, sit, your, sit your ass down. At what point? I wanted to say, when all seriousness, rest in peace, Wanda Smith. I know her, I know her family. No sister very well. And uh, I talked to a sister today. They haven't made the arrangements yet. But when they, when they make them, uh, well, the funeral might be over by next Wednesday. But if not, of course, I'll convey whatever they are. I want to give a major serious shout out to my boy, Sam Mitchell, man. Thank you for coming, man. You, bro? Hello, Sam. Come on, man. Anything. Anything for you, bro. You know that. I'd like to ask you, like we ask all our guests, is there, do you have any social media, anything you want to advertise on the show? Any, <laughs> anything at all? You, is your radio show uh, cranked Well, up? I do a radio show on Sirius XM on Saturday mornings. But DC, I would just, I like to say this. Look, 
Man, we live in times where people don't want to accept the truth, where they want to make up whatever truth they want. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to stand before that man, mm -hmm. yeah. that entity, yeah. that yeah. God. Yes. And we're going to have to stick our case. And yeah. nobody can stay there for you. And yeah. I just want to be a fly on the wall and listen to what some of these people are going to say mm. when he asked them yeah. why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we all going to answer, man, and, and, and karma's a bitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and it's going to show up and, every you know? time. And DC, I'll yeah. say this, man. Look, I love you, my brother. Yeah. I'm proud of I you. I love you, man. I'm proud to call you my friend. And anytime oh. you need me, you know I'm coming, bro. Oh. I appreciate you know that. Mm. Same here, brother. You I appreciate it. Man. I know it, D. If I call you, you coming. That's right, boy. I know it. I help you move out when you're white. Well, <laughs> keep bringing that up. <laughs> See, he ain't gonna keep never, bringing that up. We ain't gonna never have a hug it out moment. He just, <laughs> that's just him. We had shit on top of my car and shit. God damn, boy. Let, let the woman have the couch. Uh, 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 boy, it's a mansion. Now, I ain't know we can get a love seat up there on that pinto. <laughs> Your cheap ass. <laughs> I'm DC Curry. I'm Bo P. I'm Sister JJ. Wait, ball. <laughs> I'm Brian Harper. Remember to like and subscribe, people. Like and subscribe what? <laughs> to, <laughs> to this, this race. To, to this, this show. race. Show. Boy, you've been, you been acting funny for two months now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy, hey. You ain't say nothing. As and they forgot about Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Peace and blessings. Have a good night. I'd like to thank our sold out studio audience. <laughs> Big Mike Eaton, the paparazzi. Jose, she fanning like she in church. Will Glad I ain't Smith. Head of security, Richard Collins. Main man, owner, top dog, godfather of Uptown Comedy Con. Andrew Lou Sight. Cousin of Wanda Sight. Did y'all know that? Dang, Tom, I forgot to let you say you had something to say. All right, well, remember, write down and say it next week. <laughs> what? What's wrong with you? We love you, girl, and special guest, Sam Mitchell. We're hollering.